Hello, everyone. It's really, uh, I'm very happy to be here today with all of you. And I, I'm very excited to what the future can bring to all of us, as Felicia said. I will start in a different way. I have worked with, in my last two and a half years, with Hemophilia, and that was a very learning experience. I have worked for more than 20 years in the lysosomal storage disorders field. I was the first doctor to treat Gaucher disease in Brazil to apply enzyme replacement therapy and to see the results of a transformative, really big event in a patient. Also, I have, as a doctor and as an endocrinologist, I run a clinic with type 1 diabetes for more than 500 patients for over 18 years. And finally, I have type 1 diabetes myself. For the last 44 years, I was diagnosed when I was 10 years old. So I know the burden of these diseases very well. And I think that there is a need for a therapeutic that it is efficacious, it is safe, and also do not disrupt the people's lives, in a sense, give a peace of mind to them. It's fascinating if you look, for example, in hemophilia, more than 50% of those patients, 20 years after being on factor, they still develop joint deformities, joint problems. Felicia said that type 1 diabetes, 8% of patients still have hypoglycemia at least one serious event a year, without talking about all the complications. In the lysosomal storage disorders, more than 50% of those diseases have a CNS manifestation in which enzyme does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So again, we have work to do, guys, every one of us. So I want to show a one-minute video to you to introduce you to Siglon. To create living therapeutics, Sigalon begins by engineering allergenic human cells. To produce proteins such as enzymes, factors, and antibodies, these cells are encapsulated within a fiber or spherical lattice biomaterial, which enables living therapeutics to evade immune rejection. Living therapeutics capsules are implanted into the peritoneal cavity during a laparoscopic procedure, where they remain for multiple years, acting as cell factories that deliver specific dosages of therapeutic molecules. Beyond offering more effective long-term treatments for hemophilia, diabetes, and genetic disorders, Living therapeutics may offer additional applications in synthetic biology, which are continuously being explored. So what if we could really harness the power of the engineers, human cells? What if we could have off the shelf those engineer cells? What if we could shield those cells from the body immune system? What if we could have really proteins being delivered in a constant rate? What if we could really have those cells alive for many years, being a potential function of cure, cure for those patients? I think we can. And this would provide a tremendous opportunity for us to expand the access to treatment for patients through all the globe in a, in a sense that we didn't have before. So Siglon was created in 2016 in conjunction by flagship uh, with Dan Anderson, Bob Langer from MIT. I will show you a deep pipeline that we have for our product candidates. And we recently, we were recognized as one of the top 10 emerging technologies of the year by 
Scientific American and also by uh, World Economic Forum. I didn't put here, we recently received a designation in Europe for ATMP as well for our lead uh, program in hemophilia. So again, a short, short journey, but a very successful one. And primarily because um, we have really put a good team in place, and experts on rare disease, cell, biomaterials, experiencing large, big pharma, experiencing biotech, experiencing academia. And I have to say, besides those uh, seven individuals there, we have another uh, 45, 50 people in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and they are probably watching us today, now, that I really want to thank them for their hard work over the past uh, two years. They brought us where we are today that we can aspire to transform the lives of patients with chronic disease. Thank you, guys. You were awesome. Also, I'm very, very proud of the board that we have. Again, we, we have names like Bob Langer, Dan Anderson from MIT. We have also names like Bob Ruflu, former R&D head of White. Doug Cole is our chairman from Flagship and Mass General Hospital. Again, it's a very prominent board that we need in order to really to change the way we are treating those uh, chronic disease. So in a, in a kind of a just one picture here, we are trying to restore the dynamic physiology of the cells and shielding patients from their disease. You have those two pictures are actually real pictures. There are picture on showing the capsule in the lesser sac of the uh, intraperitoneal cavity. And also you have the capsule with the cells in a zoom here showing that, again, do not trigger the immune system, do not produce fibrosis, which brings the potential to be durable and programmable uh, over many, many, many years. And again, we can engineer the cell in whatever technique we want. Uh, the, that uh, is, doesn't exclude any way that you can engineer uh, those cells. But we do not use viruses at all. So it's a, some, someone even today was saying, so it's like a gene therapy in a capsule. Maybe it's a gene therapy in a capsule. I didn't, didn't really uh, think too much on that, but may, maybe that a good way to describe. Over the past, uh, I would say, many years, lots of this uh, uh, work from Bob Langer, Dan Anderson, have been published in very prestige publications. And this shows the efforts over many, many years, a decade at least, trying to protect those cells in order to not trigger the fibrosis, not trigger the immune system. So the fibromer technology that we uh, incorporate in Sigilon really was a, a long effort, and I think that is an important element. Let me show you a few of these experiments in terms of the fiber and tech law, technology where we demonstrate that we eliminate the body-moon response. In the graph at the top, you can see cells, uh, capsules containing cells, and in the left side, the green is a representation of the macrophage, so that you can really see the macrophages there, and this is a capsule that was not modified with the fibromer technology. In the right, it's really hard to see with the lights, but you barely cannot see any green there just because there are no macrophages there and the, the capsule was covered by the fibromer technology. In the bottom, you can also see a polymer that was treated with the fibrotech technology and the other one in the left that was not. You can almost can't see the polymer in the left where you can really see very well uh, crystal and clear after a few weeks that, that this has been implanted in the, in the mice. If people, and then the next question would be, can those proteins be really distributed throughout the body? And in this experiment, we demonstrate that even a protein like luciferase, which has a very short half-life, can then present as a long-term st stable protein being distributed throughout the body you can clearly see a higher gradient in appearing in the intraperitoneal cavity, but then you see that the distribution of course in the whole uh, in the whole body. So that's that makes us really excited with 
the possibilities, for example, uh, factor seven, it's a very short, short half-life protein. We could change that if by this kind of uh, implantation. So another question is, okay, what about can you remove, can you retrieve, and they are durable? So this was a proof of concept that we did in non-human primates in which you can really see uh, the capsules that are very crystal and clear after month and four months of the implantation, and, and we just terminated by, by that time to take a, a look. No fibrosis at all. Those cells and those capsules have functional cells still by, those, by this time, and that really demonstrated that the capsules are durable, safe, and retrievable, if necessary, uh, in those uh, animal studies. So when we think, okay, what, in what can we apply that uh, and, and again, I think that it's a very broad application. We can go to different approaches, and I just list a few ones here. Systemic protein replacement, like we are thinking for hemophilia, or intracellular enzymes, like for lysosomal storage disorders, metabolic things, sensor responding, like in diabetes or in PTH or in others. And also very interesting, on target, target implantation. So for those Lysosomal storage disorders that have the CNS as a big place in terms of manifestation, these patients are not really uh, treated at this point. So can we implant those capsules with proteins that are being delivered in the CNS? And the, the answer is yes, we can. Even in the eye, we could be able, uh, again, those capsules are new, usually 1.5 millimeters in size. So you can, you can do a lot uh, with those capsules. So for those of you that were here last year, I believe that Devin, uh, our chief uh, uh, strategy officer, he presented Siglon last year. And you probably will notice that there's a big evolution in just the one year. We have now a deep pipeline. We have started lead optimization in all of these uh, programs, and we are on track to go to our 6001 for hemophilia A by the end of 19, entering phase one clinical trials. So we are extremely, extremely excited with this next uh, 12, 15 months that reserved to us. A few examples in terms of the cell productivity that we have been so far uh, observing. Oops. So here, you see that optimization of molecular cell capsules, cell density, and many other aspects really pay off. So you have in, in the graph a normalization in terms of factor levels um, through all of these optimizations in the capsule. And you can see also a, a picture of that capsule where you see the outer compartment in a thickness uh, uh, that you see literally very clear, and then all the cells there in this matrix uh, that they are, I say that the cells are happy, living well, so they, they are not spending too much energy because they are just laying down and just producing what they have to produce, which is uh, exactly what you want. But they produce really uh, in a therapeutic levels. Question is, is this uh, therapeutic level sufficient to produce and correct the hemostasis? And the, the answer is yes. Here we demonstrate that decrease the bleeding time to normal levels as well. So again, you have levels that are according to normal, and you have, um, uh, again, normalization of bleeding time. Very quickly, that I'm seeing the red or orange, it's still orange. In type 1 diabetes, we have signed a deal with Lily. I was very pleased, that, again, I say that I am alive because of Lily, and uh, if I didn't have Lily, I would not be here today with, with you. And uh, in two years, insulin discovery will be celebrate 100 years of discovery. What wonderful it would be if we could, after 100 years, bring something else. So we signed a new strategic collaboration with Lily, and uh, uh, that is, is, is really ongoing to produce the encapsulated with cell therapy to cure type 1 diabetes. Just a, uh, again, I probably will not repeat, but those studies here with our capsule demonstrate that even with right uh, head eyelids or human eyelids, 
we can normalize the glucose control into the mice for a longer period of time. So again, uh, we are very excited. We think we have a way to liberate patients from serious chronic diseases. We can implant the shield in living therapeutics, potentially offering a functional cure. And if that, again, off the shelf, we can for sure expand that access. Don't forget, only 50% of patients with hemophilia are being treated today in the world. Thank you so much.